All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to replace the screen on this early 2014 um, 13-inch MacBook Air. All right, so first thing we're gonna need is a Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. We'll also need a T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver, as well as a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Um, I believe that's all the screwdrivers we'll need, but if we end up needing others, I'll let you know in advance or when we get to that point. All right, so first we're gonna use the Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver and remove all the screws. You wanna keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and length. The way I do that, put the flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them, so this rectangular pattern, and that's how I keep track of all those screws, all right? So we're gonna do that. The middle two back here are much longer than the rest, um, but even though the others all look exactly the same, it's always a good idea to keep them in order. All right, so again, keep to that pattern. If this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also find how to repair and upgrade their devices. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel so that I can continue making these videos for a living. All right, every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, these are actually customer computer repairs, so I don't own these devices. Um, so keep that in mind every so often I get customers or viewers that will ask me or tell me about things I can do to my computer but these aren't my computers all right and if you have any questions make sure to watch the video all the way through um, to make sure I don't answer them already in the video I get a lot of questions where it's already answered in the video and it's really tough to answer to thousands of questions where it's already answered in the video all right so there we go we removed the cover I don't know if you saw how, but you go from the back here and then you just pull it up. There's one clip holding it to the battery, um, but other than, that, other than that, that's it. All right, so anyways, there's a lot of dust in here, so I'm going to clean this out and I'll be back. Uh, basically, I take this outside, I use a toothbrush to loosen the dust, and then I have an electric air blower that just blows all the loosened dust out. All right, so I'll do that and I'll be back. All right, I'm back, so clean off the cover a bit. All right, clean that. All right, so let's see here. What do we got now? All right, so first thing we're gonna do now is remove the battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver and remove the five screws here. Okay, again, keep all these screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. This battery looks like it might be slowly going bad because the texture of it's a little bit rough. Um, it's not really bad where it's inflated, but the rough texture, um, it's caused by something called dendrites where the lithium starts forming crystals and eventually it causes problems and can start inflating and things like that. Um, I don't think I've ever had one where it just randomly went on fire or anything like that. But, uh, I mean, it's possible if the thing punctures the layers in between. <clears throat> so, yeah. All right. Anyways, we got these five screws out. Let's go ahead and take the battery out. So we're going to lift it up. I just get my fingernail under here to kind of pull it up. You want to watch carefully how I do this because if you do this wrong, you can damage the cable underneath. All right. So while you're lifting this up, get your hand under here and you're going to use your fingers to lift up the front side here. All right, now while you're holding that up, grab this tab and then you kind of just wiggle this as you kind of pull it and there you go, it comes out very easily and you can lift the battery out. So there's kind of a lot of dust in here so I'm gonna clean that out as well. But the reason you wanna lift the front is because here this cable, because they fold it like this, a lot of times it'll get caught on that cable and I've seen some people damage their cable just by yanking the battery out. So it's a good idea to lift the front up carefully and then pull the battery back, all right? So let me clean out this dust over off to the side. All right, there we go. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to, um, let me see here. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, drain the power from the computer. So let's go ahead and open up the computer. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked with other things I'm thinking about. Hold the power button for 15 seconds to drain any residual power from the motherboard. This is very important when replacing the screen. This screen goes all weird rainbowy colored, so we're replacing it. And yeah, 
All right, after you've hold it for 15 seconds, you can go ahead and close that. Next thing we're gonna do is disconnect the screen itself. So you got the screen connector here. Let me see if I can get a good view for you guys. Oh, I got some dust in my eyes. All right, so we're gonna zoom in like that. Zoom a bit more. Okay, now we're gonna flip this little latch up. Just get underneath with a plastic pry tool or your fingernails and flip it just like this. Then grab the two edges and as close to the bottom of this latch as possible, you're gonna just pull it back. All right, so just like that. And that's how you disconnect the cable. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna rotate this. Let's go ahead and disconnect the wireless antennas. So the wireless antennas are here. You can use little tweezers or plastic tools or whatever. Just go as close as you can to the tail of the antenna and there you go, just pop it up just like that. We're gonna do that on both sides, the same thing. Go to the tail and then we're just gonna pop that up. All right, just like that. And then we're gonna pull this out and we're gonna undo this wiring here. So you can see it's um, wedged down there between the aluminum parts. We're just gonna pull the thing out from there, okay? Just like this. And then this rubber piece, it's gonna go out from under there as well. And there we go, all right? Okay, next thing we're gonna do, <clears throat> let's zoom out here. We're gonna disconnect some other components. So let's actually, <coughs> excuse me, let's disconnect the stuff under here. So I get my fingernails under on the corners and then I just pull it up like that. We're gonna go on both sides, just like this pull that up as well. All right. And then we're going to peel this up. There's an adhesive holding it. It helps to kind of try and keep this cable as flat as possible. You don't want to roll it backwards. So I pull it this way as I pull it up. So just like this. All right. And there we go. A lot of times this adhesive will just tear because they put a foam there, but this one, it remained intact. And you can see here, if you need to replace that cable, there is a model number there, 821-1722-A. All right. So we're going to set that aside. Next thing we're gonna do is get this stuff out. So let's actually take the fan out of the way so it's a little bit easier to work on. We're gonna use the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver still. All right, and let's go ahead and remove these screws here. Again, keep all these screws in order. They are different size, shape, and lengths, all right? Very important. It's always a good practice to keep all the screws in order and put them back where you got them. All right, so there's three screws holding this fan in place. So we're gonna remove all three of those screws. All right, just like that. Once you get all those screws out, you might have to move this rubber out of the way because there's an adhesive. We're gonna lift this slowly. You wanna be very careful because we have to disconnect this cable. So to disconnect that, you just, again, flip up this little latch. I just use my fingernail just like that, flip that latch, and then I get my finger underneath to grab the cable here. So on the other side, and we kind of just wiggle and pull it. And you want to make sure you're grabbing on the bottom of that cable because if you just yank it out, you can actually tear this cable easily. All right, so there we go. Next thing we're gonna do, we don't need to take this whole board out, but we're gonna um, take this screw out just so we can lift it up enough to remove the eyesight or webcam cable from there. So we're moving this cable to the side. We're gonna use the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver to remove that one screw there. All right, there we go. And now all the screws are removed here to where you can actually lift this board up slightly. We're not gonna take it out completely. We're just lifting it so we can get this cable out. All right, so let's go ahead and disconnect this here so we have a little more room to work. If you can grab it from this side, it would be nice, but because it's such a small area to grab, usually I have to grab this cable and then you kind of just wiggle it as you pull it. Again, just keep wiggling it. Don't try and yank it out really fast and it'll eventually come out. There we go. All right, now we got the EyeSight webcam cable here. We're gonna take that cable out. And this one, can be a little tricky to remove. Um, usually what I do is I use my screwdriver, but if you're not careful with this, you might wanna use something smaller and not as um, dangerous. So you can use like a little plastic tool, something like this, all right? Or even like a toothpick will work. But basically you push the wings like this, left, right, left, right, okay? Just like that. <clears throat> Again, you can do this with the screwdriver, but if you do, you wanna be very careful that you don't damage the area around it or the area below it. Okay, so there we go. We got the EyeSight webcam cable disconnected. Let's zoom back out a bit. All right, and then we're gonna have to just get it out from under here. So again, we're just gonna lift this board up slightly and then we're just gonna pull this cable out just like that and then unthread it from this loop there. 
Okay, next we all, um, all we have left to do is to remove the screws from the hinges. So we're gonna switch over to the T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver. Okay, let's zoom out a bit. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna open up the screen all the way completely until it stops. You don't wanna open it too quick, just open it slowly until it stops. And then you can rest the <coughs> keyboard down on your table and have the screen hanging off the edge of your desk. All right, then we're going to go ahead and remove the um, six screws, three on each side for the hinges. All right, just like this. It's also a good idea once you um, put the screws back to put some thread locker if you have it. I like to use the red stuff. I just use a little because it holds a lot better. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and remove all six screws. Sometimes I find these screws come loose with the blue stuff, so I like to use the red thread locker. Um, I don't use a crazy amount, just enough so that it's on the screws. But there you go, we got all six screws out. <clears throat> now that you got all six screws out, let the screen drop a little, and then you can go ahead and lift this up. All right, and there we go, we got the old screen out. Now we're going to get the replacement screen and install it. So the replacement screen, um, I ordered this one actually on Amazon. They packed it pretty nicely with these little corner things. So we're going to take those out. Okay. Get those off. All right. Then you got this. All right. They got some foam and cardboard here. Looks pretty nice. All right. And we got the screen sandwiched in between. Very easy to remove. Again, on the bottom, they had more foam and cardboard. And then inside, they also put more foam in here. So this kind of adhesive for these bags are pretty nice. Usually it's pretty easy to just peel it up. Yep. All right. So just like that, Let's peel this up and slowly take the screen out. All right, set that bag aside. All right, then we're gonna have to undo all this tape before we pull this foam away. So peel this out. And you want to roll this tape back just like this. And if you can, hold on to the connector. All right, slowly rolling the tape back. And there we go. Okay, and then we're going to peel the tape off of this, the wireless antennas and the eyesight camera as well. Just like that. And just like this. There we go. Get those cables out. And then, oh, they put tape over this whole foam piece. So peel that out as well. And then we can get this foam piece out. Let's go ahead and get the tape out this side as well. Okay. There we go. And we'll set that foam aside as well. All right. And if you want, you can take off all these pieces of tape here. I'm going to just stick them here. Oh, they actually made release tabs, so I peeled it off from the, the more difficult side. If you look at the other side, they do. that's the way I like to do the tape, but usually I assume most people don't do that. <laughs> Alright, anyways, now we're going to have to open these hinges up all the way. So the way you do that, just take your T8 Torx 8 screwdriver, get it in the screw hole, and then just rotate it just like that. Again, you want to do this carefully. You don't want to just rip it back because then you can accidentally damage the hinge. There we go. All right, next thing we're gonna do is hold the cables up out of the way. I use my fingers like this to push the cables up and out of the way. And then we're gonna slowly drop the screen into place, just like this. Okay, get that in on both sides. Oh, this plastic they had, um, it's not aligned right, so I have to actually slide it over all the way. There we go, so the metal, I don't know if you can see it, so it was slid over like that. And because of that, it wasn't fitting in. So I was worried that they did something wrong. But there we go. So I'm going to hold this up. And then we're just going to drop it into place. There we go. All right. So that plastic piece actually aligns itself when you have it in place. So don't worry about it. If it's not aligned, just realign it and you should be fine. Okay. Next thing we're going to do now is put back the hinge screws. Usually what I like to do is I like to put these inner screws first because we're gonna have to align the screen to the rest of the computer. So I'll put that one screw first, and then we'll do the same thing on this side, put that inner screw as well. 
Okay, you don't want to over tighten it right now because we are going to align it. All right now that you got those two screws in, we're going to just close the screen. So slowly, carefully close it. Just like that. All right, let's go ahead and zoom back in now. Okay, so now that we got that closed properly, we're going to take the screw out slightly just to realign everything. So now that we got those screws out, you want to check the alignment. Make sure it's aligned side to side. Everything is flush. Okay, make sure everything is lined up properly. Looks good. All right, and then once you make sure that's good, then you can go ahead and tighten those screws back down. We are going to have to take these out one more time after to redo the um, thread, thread locker. All right, so there we go. Okay, next thing we're going to do, make sure you get these cables all lined up right. Okay, so you got this. The wireless antennas, again, are going to go underneath here, so we are going to have to take that screw out later to do that. So let's get now the thread locker. Okay. All right, so we're going to get the thread locker here. Um, it's a little clogged, so let me unclog this real quick. Yep, uh, give me a second, I need a needle to unclog this thing. Huh, I don't know why it's clogged so much. I poked a hole through it and it's still clogged. Let me make sure it's unclogged all the way. Hopefully I won't need like a long needle to get through the bottom piece. It looks like I might. All right, let me unclog this and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. So I unclogged that. So we're just gonna get the screws here, okay? I'm gonna move this off to the side because I don't wanna apply the thread locker on top of the thing. I might, oops, I'm rolling up the adhesive thing on there, okay. All right, so now we're just going to add a very tiny bit of this stuff. Oh no, the little clog thing is still in there. Hold on, I'll be back. Okay, I think I got enough of it out that I can use it. So let's go ahead and apply a tiny bit. All right, just a tiny bit of thread locker. We're going to put this screw in here. And that will hold the entire thing in place. All right. Let me actually zoom in on the screw mount area so we can see better. Let's now work on the one on the right hand side here. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna get the screw and then we're just gonna add a tiny bit of thread locker on there. Man, this thing keeps clogging itself back. There's like a thing that got um, completely hardened in there and it plugged up the entire thing. So, okay, let me see if I can get that clog out. I'll be back. Okay, hopefully I got enough of it out that it's gonna stop clogging up. Let's go ahead and get the stuff on. All right, still clogging up, but I made do. Too many pauses in the video so might as well just do it all right there we go the other screw oops way too much there we go that one in tighten that down all right get this screw back out because we didn't have the thread locker stuff on it All right, add that on there as well. Okay, tighten that up. Okay, there we go. So now we got all of this side done. Let's go ahead and go on to the other side. All right. See if I can get this in view. There we go. All right, so we already got that one in. Let's go ahead and take this screw back out. All 
We're going to now just loosely fit it here just to hold this um, metal piece in place. Okay, make sure that goes down there. And then we're just going to loosely fit this one. All right, now let's get the thread locker and put it on the other screw. go get that in there and tighten that down sorry my hands in the way all right but there we go get that screw in then we'll take this one out and add the thread locker to there okay just like that tighten it on and there we go so now we got all the hinge screws screws in place Let's go ahead now and put the thread locker stuff away. All right, close that up. Need to clean it so it doesn't get clogged again. All right, set that aside. Okay, let's zoom out now. So now we got the whole screen into place. Now we're going to start reconnecting things. So first thing, of course, let's go ahead and reconnect the screen cable here. Let's see if I can get a good view of this. Sorry, I keep zooming in and out. All right, so I wanna use this one. All right, so when you do this, you wanna make sure that the gold pins are on top. So this is upside down right now. You wanna flip it so that the gold pins are facing the top. All right, so we're gonna get that cable flipped over like that. Line it up. Make sure everything is lined up properly. Okay, the corners are the most important. I'm actually working on it upside down right now. But uh, do that, once you get it lined up, you can go ahead and pull the connector in. Let me actually flip this so I can get a better view. Okay. All right, once you get all those connectors in, I'm gonna pull the, why is this side not going in? There we go, get that latched in properly, and then flip this latch down. All right, and there we go. Now we're gonna go to the other side. Let's go ahead and get the, um, webcam eyesight camera back in place so just like before get that lined up tuck that underneath we're gonna push the excess under there let's zoom out a bit okay just like before tuck that excess under there all right just like this get the camera cable lined back up with the connector here okay get that into place and then once you get that in place, same thing like before, we're just going to use the plastic tool to help push it in. So left, right, left, right, just like that. Keep walking it slowly into place. There we go. Now that connector is in. <clears throat> Make sure to tuck all this cable down. Okay, just like that. And then you can go ahead and plug this back in. Get that lined up, pinch the two pieces together. There we go. Let's go ahead now and put the fan back into place. Make sure that latches up. Get the rubber piece out of the way. There's a little bit of dust there, so we're actually gonna brush this off. There we go. And clean that out. Okay, get this back into place. And then slowly get that in get that cable lined up and then when you have it bowed up like that you can actually push down on top and it will push it in and then you can just slide your finger over the top to latch it back down there we go all right so next thing we're gonna do we're gonna make sure that this board is in the right position so to do that what you want to do let's actually grab the charger you want to make sure your charger is unplugged when you do this I have this little adapter so it makes it easier, but we're just going to connect that there. And then we can use that to pull this against the case. And then you can also um, pull this part slightly against the case make sure that the headphone jack is flush in there. All right. Anyways, we're done with the T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver bit. So let's go ahead and switch back to the T5 or Torx 5 screw screwdriver. Where'd it go? It disappeared. Hold on. Let me find that and I'll be back. I think I knocked it around somewhere. All right, I'm back. It's stuck to the cover because there's a magnet in here. So anyways, let's go back over here. Okay, 
First thing we're going to do is put back the screw for this board. Again, you want to hold that into place. So let's get that in and tighten that screw down just like that. All right, now that we got that screw in, you can take this out. We're going to put back all three fan screws, but we're going to loosely fit them first. You don't want to tighten it all the way down yet because you can see the fan can actually move around right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get all these screws. All right. Now that we all got all three, I'm going to use my thumb to pull this up as close to the heat sink as possible, and then we can go ahead and tighten the screws down. All right, once you got two of them tightened, then you can let go and you can go ahead and tighten the last one down. Stick that adhesive back in. All right, and then we just got to get the wireless antenna back into place. So this can be a little bit tricky. Um, I actually will use the T8 screwdriver to help with this, or the T8 bit. All right, you can use whatever. You can use a larger one if you want. Um, but anyways, we're going to have to get this down here. So you want to be careful because if you use a too large or too small, if you use the T5 and just try and shove this down, you can actually break this cable. So you don't want to use that to force it in. We're going to use the T5 to kind of hold it in place, and then we'll use the T8 to kind of push it down. But first thing, um, let's go ahead and get this underneath this rubber piece. So you kind of have to pull the rubber back a little bit, and then you can push this over. There you go, and then you can shove that into there. Rubber piece kind of came up a little bit. Make sure it goes in place right. Okay, same thing. Keep using the T8 to help with that. All right, so this one, we're gonna have to get underneath the rubber piece again. So I use the T5 to push that back in there. So I push it behind the rubber piece. And then while I'm pushing that, I pull up the rubber slightly and that helps get it into place. All right, it's going in. We're gonna use the other screwdriver to help on the other side. Push that underneath and there we go. Tuck that in. All right, keep working your way over, tucking the cable into place just like this. All right, keep working your way over. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay, keep going and tucking this in. You have to kind of bend the cable a little bit, flex it, push it inwards to get it to get tucked over behind the screw mounts. There we go. All right, so now we've got all of that tucked in. Now we just gotta get these back into place so get the antennas back in those little notches there okay might help to use the screwdriver to help move it there we go all right let's zoom in a bit so you can see better i'm going to flip this over so it's easier for me to work on so you got that all right get the antenna lined up you might have to twist it a bit if it's not flat all right, get that lined up. The way you know it's lined up is once it's in the right place, okay, if you try and move it around, it stays in place, then you can go ahead and push it down. All right, this one, I have to kind of rotate the antenna because it's kind of going up. Get it lined up. All right, and push that into place. And there we go, we got all the wireless antennas in. Let's zoom back out. Okay, then we got this cable. Don't forget to put that back in. Um, just make sure you get it the right way. You don't want it to go upside down and then cover the fan, okay? So get that line back up, push that into place, and then you can go ahead and push down that adhesive. All right, let's zoom back out and let's go ahead and put the battery back in. All right, same thing like before. You kind of want to hold the, up, the front part up a little and then get this connector into place. Pinch the two pieces together, just like that, and then you can drop the battery down. All right, if you want to test it first, you can actually just put the middle screw in first. We're going to do a PRAM and SMC reset. It's always a good idea to do that after doing a major hardware replacement. All right, so there we go. We got that. Now let's go ahead and put this cover back on. Click that into place. I'm going to flip this back over. 
All right, let's open this up. And again, we're gonna do a PRAM and SMC reset. So let's plug this in. So first thing we're gonna do is the SMC reset. Your charger should be orange if your battery isn't 100%. Then what you're gonna do is control option shift on the left side and then you press the power button. The light should go green, and then it should go back to orange. So there we go, we did the SMC reset properly. Now we're gonna power it up and do a PRAM reset, so turn it on, and then immediately command option P and R, hold those buttons down, you should see the screen come on and then flash off. If it does that, you know you did the PRAM reset properly. If you want, you can keep holding it, and then you can um, hear the chime, hold it till it shuts off, and then when you hear the chime a second time, you can let go. I already saw the chime and I saw it shut off, so I'm going to let go. But you can just keep holding it until you hear the chime twice, and that's how you know you did the PRAM reset properly. So there we go. Now the Apple logo is coming on. We can actually peel this off. The screen looks good. Again, you want to kind of like roll this off if you can. You don't want to just pull it straight back. But there we go. All right. Customer wanted their original screen back, so I'm going to package this back up their old screen back up in the same stuff and I will give that back to them All right. so I'm peel this out. computers on now. It's complaining about their storage almost full, but other than that, it's fixed. All right, so their computer's now on. I'm going to check the camera real quick. So it's always a good idea to check that. So we're going to go here and open up photo booth just to make sure the camera's working. And yep, the camera's working. So we're good to go. I'm going to close that. We're going to shut it down and we'll give it back to the customer. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others. Um, of course, don't forget to put back all the screws. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I probably should have left that plastic on until I did that. But anyways, let's go ahead and pop this out. Put back the remaining T5 or Torx 5 screws, okay, for the battery. Alright, then we'll just pop this cover back on and we'll put back the um, Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screws. All right. And other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. Again, if it did, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If, it video, if the video helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel so that I can continue making these videos for a living. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. You're welcome to stay as I finish putting back the rest of the screws. But that's all there is to it. Alright, there you go. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Let's drop this spike.